So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. Right, oh, tell you there, champs. Let's see if this Aero 15 OLED is the content creator's dream. And if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woodtrain, hit that bell, ding ling dong, and yeah, give me a like if you like this video. Oh, one thing, guys, I'm starting a Premier League Fantasy League. If you want to join, just you know, just use the details you can see on the screen there. It'd be awesome if you can join this Fantasy League. So let's just see, is it the content creation king? I'm using the Studio Driver. So when I compare to the XPS 15, you got to remember, I couldn't use the Studio Studio driver with the XPS 15. I'll be comparing it a bit to the Mac 2. Here is the studio driver. So if you go into GeForce Experience, you can select studio or game ready. With the XPS, you don't have this option because I think you need a certain graphics card. You might have to have an RTX graphics card to be able to do this. And when you download it, you cannot install it. So if anyone knows how to do that, anyway, doesn't matter. We're using the studio driver, but just know that this is undervolted. I undervolted it because everybody else is undervolting their laptops using Studio Driver and the other benchmarks were not using the Studio Driver. And I've shown that the Studio Driver does give you faster performance. Nvidia said it can play back 8K content. Well, not in Premiere Pro. This is at full, this is 8K content. Can't play it back. 4K content, it plays no problem, okay? So 4K, it just smashes anything with color correction, luminary color, everything. But yeah, 8K, it cannot play it back at full. You know, none of these laptops will. So Nvidia, stop doing these propaganda videos where you're showing with some sort of red utility that, yeah, you can um, play back 8K footage. Really, instead of making those propaganda videos, how about you work with Adobe or, you know, Blackmagic and DaVinci to actually be able to play the footage in the timeline of those video editing apps. Now here you've got DPC latency, and this is another thing, NVIDIA. NVIDIA drivers are stuffing up the DPC latency on Windows laptops or just Windows devices in general. So NVIDIA, work with the manufacturers so we're not getting this DPC latency. That being said, we're not in the red. So for audio, I've actually recorded into this. Um, I've recorded into the timeline of Premiere. It seems to be no problem. So I'm thinking audio is not a problem, but um, yeah, it's Windows. Welcome to Windows world. That's what it is. And NVIDIA, yeah, they're stuffing up. Now SSD, plenty fast. It is all Intel inside. You've got Wi-Fi 6 in there. You've got Intel SSD. Intel chipset, you know, Samsung RAM, all premium parts in here. Now, a lot of people are saying, is this the best for content creation? And certainly in the gaming segment, it is. I haven't reviewed the latest Alienware, so I will reserve a bit of judgment until I see that. But is this better than the Razer? There's no doubt this is better than the Razer, even probably for gaming as well. And the reasons it's better than the Razer is it has two M.2s in there. So you can put two SSDs in there one for your project files, one for your applications and Windows, and that is the best way you want it. You want your project files on another drive, and you can do that with this. Also, the best calibrated screens. These are individually calibrated, x right Pantone certified, not batch calibrated like everyone else. I think Apple and Gigabyte are the only ones that are actually calibrating per panel. So every single panel is calibrated individually. So you have the best color accuracy. Even though everybody else is using the same OLED panel, as this this is calibrated the best you also have the fast sd card reader so anyway let's have a look at spec perf view here spec view perf and there you can see all the 3d applications and i can tell you that this is faster than the arrow i will have the oled arrow in soon it's not going to be much difference once you use the studio driver i think they will both be similar in this regard now let's have a look at some content creation benchmarks and as you can see here xps 15 on the left arrow 15 on the right and there's a big difference there and that's because this has a better gpu if you don't know this benchmark tests gpu effects cpu effects it tests playback and it tests rendering so it tests everything it also tests prores red raw canon footage i think h.264 h.265 i think too it tests all the codecs and where this has the advantage over the xps 15 is obviously in the graphics card because you know in the playback if you 
why it gets a higher score in the playback compared to the XPS 15 is because it can play back some of those transitions. So some of those effects you're putting in the timeline, it can play them back better because of their GPU accelerated and it has a more powerful GPU. And this has the RTX 2070 by the way and the i7 9750H. So that's where the advantages are if the rendering uses the GPU and a bit in the playback if you're playing through effects or anything that's GPU accelerated. That being said, in the timeline, if you're just doing H.264, there really isn't a difference. Now, when it comes to rendering, my sample project, which I test every single laptop on, you can see there, boom, straight up the top of Windows laptops, okay? Straight up the top, 735. It is undervolted, as I said, but you know, laptops are coming out now, undervolted out of the factory, so it's fair to undervolt this. Top of the charts there for the Windows laptops, but have a look at those Macs. Um, what's interesting to me about the Mac here is have a look. The Mac, six minutes and 31 seconds open CL. So this is software rendering. It beats an XPS 15 with an eGPU 2080 Ti. Yeah. So Adobe need to do some software upgrades for the Windows side. They've done it for the Mac. It's good that they've done that because it used to run like a piece of crap on the Mac. Now they need to do it on Windows. And the studio drivers help out a bit, but we're not quite there yet. I mean, with these sort of specs, we should be beating out the MacBook Pro pretty easily there. Just a quick look at the Cinebench score. Look at that. Because it can maintain that sort of 80-something watts, 2,891. That's i9 score. This one is an i7, 6 core and undervolted because it can maintain those 80 watts. Yes, look. Pretty much 2,900 is a 9.9 score. So yeah, that is awesome. When it comes to Photoshop, not much difference here because it's not really GPU heavy there. So really it's based on the CPU and you can see XPS 15 and the Aero pretty much the same. Not much to choose between them. And of course, everything is optimized for the Mac these days and the Mac just crushes it there. As I said before, these do have the best color calibrated monitors. I measured 470 nits and these are the color gamuts there, the, you know, 99.4 DCI and pretty much, you know, 94% Adobe. That's what you'd expect, 570 nits brightness, and they do guarantee delta E values of no more than one. Now, when it comes to Lightroom export, this is basically a CPU test here, and indeed it is undervolted. You can see here, yeah, it's pretty much, you know, neck and neck with the XPS 15, same CPU, both undervolted, you know, similar results. That's what you'd expect. This is exporting Nikon NEFs to JPEGs from Adobe Lightroom. So yeah, it really crushes it on exporting there. But given that the laptops all have pretty much the same CPUs, they're going to be similar scores. So here's the um, 2070 score. I just want to, actually, I want to show the XPS 15 just to give you an idea. All right, that's the XPS 15 score. Okay, so look at the tracking. You can get a screen grab here if you want. You know, the Cinema 4D, the CPU stress, the playback and that. Now, what you need to know is After Effects is not really GPU heavy. So that score is 644. It's not that far away from the Aero here. So the Aero is still faster because it has a faster GPU. And obviously maybe the CPU can go a bit harder because you can go into the 80 watts there. But it's really not that much difference if we have a look at it side by side. The difference isn't as much as you would think it would be given that the Aero has a much more powerful graphics card. But as I said, remember, After Effects, I know you would think it would use a GPU, but it actually uses more of the CPU. So that is what it is. So when it comes down to it here, is this the content creation king? And I will say, I think it is the content creation king. Although it's in silent mode here, you can hear it. Can you hear it? Maybe you can hear it. That's the only thing. It's in like quiet mode and I can still hear it. And yes, I'm using HDMI to output to this capture card. So that does heat it up a bit. I don't really hear it that much when I'm not connected to the HDMI, but it does come on every now and then. You can go into the profiles and do your own sort of settings, so you can go to custom setting, but even in quiet mode, you're gonna hear it, so you really probably will need to go to the custom mode. This is the content creation king because it has the best calibrated display. You've got the two M.2s, you have the fastest SD card reader, has all the ports you want, Thunderbolt 3. The only things I can nitpick is the keyboard's great, no problem with it, but because it has the number pad, the track pad's to the left, so it ruins the ergonomics for me because I'm a right-hander. Also, that fan, I can hear it every now and then, even on quiet mode. And if I was really, really nitpicking, 
I would like to see another Thunderbolt 3. Maybe drop off the USB-C and drop off one of the USB Type A's. You know, it's got plenty of those. So maybe drop off one of those in the USB-C and put a Thunderbolt 3. And that's like perfect, like absolute perfection. So that's about it. I mean, also this has a big battery on it too. So you get good battery life compared to say the, the Razer as well. So it's going to be hard to beat this for a content creation device. I think definitely in the gaming segment, if you're talking a thin premium gaming segment, you know, the Razers, the Alienware, the MSI, GS65 or whatever, this is the king in that segment. Would I compare it still to the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro? Uh, I think it still is more gaming, but obviously, you know, with RTX graphics, it's gonna be more powerful than the XPS 15, but I still think it's in the gaming segment. But that being said, put the studio drivers in here and boom, you got the content creation king here on the Windows side. Um, it's gonna be hard to beat this one. Catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.